Hi, I'm Chelsea of Friday Pattern Company and today we are going to be going over how you sew the welt pocket on the polka knit pullover. So today we're going to make a beautiful welt pocket and this is it. On the back side, this panel is lined so you won't see this, but this is what the pocket looks like on the back. Welt pockets can be challenging, but they are achievable for a beginner sewist. The thing that makes them hard is that they do require more precision than other things. So there are parts where you're gonna get to somewhere where you can't sew past. So if you're a beginner who is attempting welt pockets for the first time, you should definitely do a practice round. But I think that my best advice would be just to slow down take it step by step and focus on precision and I'm going to flag the places where you need to be careful and it's gonna be great you can totally do it there's a couple things with welt pockets that are gonna come down to your personal preference because sometimes I think that too much information actually will bog you down so what I'm talking about is the the welt uh, placement marks so when you're marking these on your fabric, you have the option to either just mark the um, line with the two V's on the end, which is what I do, or you can mark the line with the two V's on the end and the square that goes all the way around. Some people like to have that square so that they can see all of the boundaries of where their welt is going, their welt opening is going to be. For me, I feel like it gives me a little bit too many lines. If you want to mark those lines, you can, but um, in this video, we're not going to. The other thing is that you can put um, interfacing on your piece B behind your marks. You can fuse interfacing right here, and you're gonna wanna do that if you are working with a knit fabric, um, anything that's kind of stretchy, because that'll help hold it in place. If you're working with really bulky fabric, I would maybe skip that. And again, you know, you can kind of gauge based on your project what you think is right and sew a sample welt and see how it feels. See if you would want more stability during the construction. This video is just gonna cover the welt pockets and then next week we will have the full video sew along that goes over sewing the poganip from um, the welt pockets to the end. So let's get started. Before we get started with sewing, there's a couple prep steps we need to take care of. So first we're going to mark the welt placement on lower front B. So I've lined my pattern piece up and made sure that I have it the right way. So I'm matching notches. And then you just want to cut the legs of the welt so that you can fold them away. And then I'll use a chalk to mark the lines. You want to make sure that you get that straight line and then also the V's so that you know where you're gonna be cutting your welt open. And I'm just marking it super carefully and clearly so that I don't get confused when I'm trying to sew my welt in place. After you have that one marked, you can flip your pattern piece over so that you're, it's laying face down on the other half of your lower front B, and then you can mark your other welt. So I'm just flipping the little cut edges out so that I can draw in those markings again. I ended up tracing over it with a Sharpie so that you could see it better on the camera. The other thing I suggest doing is labeling your pattern pieces and especially the pocket bag. So the front pocket bag I and the back pocket bag H look really similar. So I'm just writing those out on a little, this is a label that I have and I'm gonna cut them out and stick them onto the wrong side of the pattern pieces just so that they're easier to keep track of. And one thing I forgot to film is that you are also going to fuse interfacing onto the wrong side of welt piece G. Our first sewing step is going to be to fold our welt piece G in half lengthwise and sew down each side using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. So here's what that looks like finished. And then we'll flip our welt right side out. To do this, you can pinch in really close at that corner pinching down the seam allowance and then flip it right side out without letting the seam allowance get kind of folded or messed up on the inside. And then you just have to like give it a little bit of a pinch and a rub and then it'll um, kind of go into a perfectly crisp corner without having to clip that seam allowance. Then you'll want to give it a good press and repeat with both welts. That's what it looks like press. Then you'll take it to the sewing machine and baste across the bottom, joining those two raw edges together. So you'll baste a quarter inch from the edge of the fabric. Now we'll join our welt to our lower front B. So I'm making sure 
that I have it right like with the top of it facing up that's I'm checking the notches there and then you can pin your welt right sides together on top of your welt marking the notches on your welt match up with these little intersections where the line splits off into V's at the top and the bottom of your welt marking and the raw edge of your welt butts up against that um, center line of your welt marking we're going to take this to our machine and baste it in place um, a quarter inch from the edge and it's really important that you just sew on top of the welt and not past it So starting at the top of your welt and then sewing down to the bottom without sewing past either end Now with right sides together. We're going to pin our Front pocket bag in place on top of our welt um, So that we're joining it to lower front B with the welt sandwiched in between the notches on our pocket bag match up with the top and bottom of our welt. So when we sew this, we're only going to sew between the notches and not past them. So the notch matches up with the top of the welt and the raw edges are matched up with each other. And we're going to take this to our machine and sew through all layers using our 3 8 inch seam allowance. You can backstitch at the beginning and the end and just make sure that you don't sew past the notches. Now grab your back pocket bag and we're going to pin it right sides together to our lower front and it butts up against our front pocket bag so it gets pinned on right sides together and the notches match up with the notches on our front pocket bag and the raw edges are butted up against each other of the front and back pocket bags just like we did with the front pocket bags we're sewing between the notches but not past them so you'll use your 3 8 inch seam allowance and you'll sew from one notch to the other back stitching at the beginning and the end now we're going to cut our welt open so we're going to use the lines that we marked in during the prep stage as a guide to cut so i'm pushing my seam allowance out of the way and just to get that first snip in i'll fold my project in half and make a snip and then I can follow this line up and you're going to carefully follow the line all the way up to where it splits off into the V and then you're going to cut diagonally out to your seam lines following those lines that you marked and you want to get as close to your seam as possible without cutting through it. So you might do this once and then when you try to press it you're going to have puckers and you'll come back but we'll go over that. So you're just cutting as close as you can. Um, just go slowly in the step and take your time to get as close to those seam lines as possible. Now we're gonna pull our pocket bags through to the wrong side. So we'll pull them through that opening that we just cut and then we'll start pressing them flat. The little triangles that are the result of the diagonal cuts you made are going to be pulled through as well and pressed towards the wrong side of your fabric and then the welt is going to push to be going to be pressed up towards your side seam this is kind of like a preliminary press because i feel like for me i'll speak just for myself i generally always have to go back and do a little bit more clipping on my welt pockets after this step so i give it a little press and then i can flip it over to the right side and check it out and as you can see here i've got some puckering going on so I know I need to get in closer to those seams so I'll flip it back over and get in with my scissors very carefully and slowly clip in to those corners and just get as close as I can to that seam line and sometimes I'll even do this with like a seam ripper to just be pulling you know like one thread at a time but basically it's just a um you know like it's clipping and then flipping over and pressing and checking again and you just keep doing this until your welt is pressing sitting perfectly when you press it once everything's looking good we're ready to do some under stitching so you'll flip it back to the wrong side and you're going to under stitch your pocket bag to the seam allowance below it on both sides so on the front pocket bag and the back pocket bag and you're just sewing through the pocket bag and the seam allowance not through your lower front at all or your welt so you'll just fold that away and then go over to your sewing machine and sew between the notches you're going to sew one eighth of an inch from the edge on your pocket bag so here's what that looks like done 
and as you can see it's just between the notches and I sewed on the pocket bag not the welt or the lower front. Then you're going to repeat that on your front pocket bag or your back pocket bag whichever one you didn't do in this one so you'll just sew you're going to understitch the seam allowance to the bag so fold away your lower front and then you'll stitch one eighth of an inch from the edge just catching that seam allowance. There we have it and now we can flip our back pocket bag down on top so that it's right sides together on top of our front pocket bag and we're going to sew them together. So we along this curved edge we're going to join front to back pocket bag and you can see that the back pocket bag sits farther out to the side than the front pocket bag because there's that welt opening in the middle. So just keep that in mind when you're, so, you're pinning these together. So I'm pinning along this curved edge. We're also pinning our lower curved edge together. So the front to back um, pocket bags on, along that lower edge. And the little triangles that were cut when we cut our weld open are going to be folded out towards the wrong side of our lower front. And they're gonna be caught in this seam allowance. When you sew this seam, you want to get as close to the base of these little triangles as possible. So I'm pinning them so that they're going to be caught in the seam allowance. We're going to take this to the sewing machine and sew it using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. So that upper cur curved edge and the lower curved edge. And then here you can see that little triangle that's, that signifies like our welt opening. And we'll start there. And I like to sew with the triangle facing up so that I can see because I'm trying to get as close to the base of that as possible. Here are those seams sewn, and I'll show you up close here. So this one got in nice and close on my first go. And then on my other side, I didn't get in as close as I wanted to on that to that welt opening on my first pass. So I went through and I sewed it again just right at the base of that little triangle. Now we are going to top stitch our welt in place along these short ends. So we're only catching the welt and the lower front in this step, not the pocket bags. We're going to sew an eighth of an inch from this short edge back stitching at the beginning and the end. And we're doing it at the top and the bottom of our welt. Okay, just one more thing and we're done. We are going to baste the base of our pocket bags in place along the hem of our lower front B just to hold them in place so they're not flapping around all over the place. And that's it. I know that welts have a lot of steps, but they are really beautiful on your finished garment and it's a fun sewing skill to have. So I hope this video was helpful and we'll see you next week for the full Pogonet Pullover Sew Along.